New this hour, the last moments of Benazir Bhutto's life captured on videotape. The Pakistani government shows video from moments before the assassination and says it was not her attacker's bullet that killed her or the bomb he detonated after the shooting, but that Bhutto died from hitting her head on the sunroof of the car in which she was traveling. Pakistan's interior minister is also pointing the finger at al-Qaeda today, saying an intercepted phone call confirms the terrorist group plotted Bhutto's murder. All this as mourning turns to violence on the day the former prime minister is laid to rest in a chaotic funeral. Tens of thousands paid tribute to her. NBC's Jim Maceda is following all of today's developments live from London for us. So, Jim, we've seen the pictures of violence coming from different parts of Pakistan today. What's the government doing to try to get a grip on this? Hi, Monica. Well, that's right. There was violence, and it was real, but thankfully it was relatively contained. There were thousands of Bhutto supporters who vented their anger in the streets and across the country. Reports of dozens of banks and shops and cars that were torched. At least 32 people at last count, including f at least four policemen, were killed, mostly in clashes in the Sindh province. That's Bhutto's home province. Paramilitary forces uh, already on red alert were given shoot-to-kill orders to contain that violence, Monica. And the army also at one point was sent out, uh, called into Sindh province as well. But again, much of Pakistan remained quiet today, the country grinding to a halt in many areas as Pakistanis began that three-day period of national mourning. Monica? And Jim, we just saw this clip of video released by the Pakistani government. Can you give us a little context? What, <clears throat> what exactly does that show as, as we call it, uh, Bhutto's final moments? That's right. Bhutto's final moments, uh, they were this newly released tape uh, shot from the point of view of someone actually in the crowd close to her vehicle. You see Bhutto there reacting uh, to her supporters while she is standing up through that sunroof, her upper body completely exposed to the crowd. Then you will see uh, the frame at one point shake. That allegedly says the interior minister is when shots are fired. Shortly after that, there's a blast that clearly occurs on the tape. The camera jerks and pans, which then ends the sequence. Uh, after showing this tape, uh, the interior minister uh, held up some x-rays of Bhutto's skull. Uh, he said that the body, as you alluded to in your lead, showed absolutely no signs of bullet or shrapnel wounds, but that she had hit her head, according to these x-rays, on the sunroof when she took the full force of that suicide bomber's blast. Also, Monica, if I could add, the interior minister uh, said that uh, they intercepted a phone call. You made reference to it, uh, what he was calling an, in, uh, an intelligence intercept. This this was between an al-Qaeda leader, apparently inside Pakistan's tribal region, and some of his men. He's heard, we believe in Urdu, congratulating them for killing Bhutto. Now, the leader, according to the Pakistani government, is somebody, somebody who commands a cell of pro-Taliban forces inside that lawless tribal area. Whatever the case may be, the Pakistani government clearly, with this intercept, is insisting here, or showing proof that al-Qaeda was, in fact, behind this attack on Benazir Bhutto. Monica? And, Jim, I'm just curious. I wondered if there was any more of an explanation given. You mentioned that they, that they showed this x-ray and that they're saying that the cause of death was actually that she hit her head on that sunroof. Uh, but I'm curious because in some of the early reports, we heard that when she had slumped back into to uh, the vehicle in which she was traveling that there was a tremendous amount of blood uh, and yet they seem to be saying that there were no bullet wounds or shrapnel wounds. Correct, and they were not. Uh, that was not actually followed up in the uh, in the press conference. Uh, he did not say there were not shots fired. There were clearly shots fired. Uh, and there was clearly shrapnel because at least 20 people died, mostly from shrapnel wounds. But uh, specifically in her case. They are insisting, the government is insisting, and forensic experts were there to uh, support this, that the skull reflected a severe traumatic concussion, but no bullet wounds. And finally, and, and finally, Jim, uh, this al-Qaeda leader who they're saying is responsible, uh, this is the same gentleman they're saying he's also responsible for that first assassination attempt made uh, against Bhutto back in October when she first returned to Pakistan? Yeah. 
The, yes, that's uh, and the, the name was mentioned. Uh, that apparently is correct. It's, an, it's a uh, a cell that has been operating out of the uh, that tribal area, north south uh, Waziristan, uh, and the uh, interior minister said that uh, he they were aware of this. She was aware of this uh, man and the cell. In fact, uh, the interior minister also added because of the criticism of the lack of security that the Pakistani government had insisted or had offered up more. More security to her, more units, uh, more interior ministry troop units in in uh, uh, reinforced uh, vehicles, and she, according to him, uh, refused because she didn't want to have such a high profile when when meeting with the crowds. Back to you, Jim Maceda. Thanks so much for that report.